Good evening. Marhaba. Thank you very much for this introduction, Omar. And thank you. I would like to thank Dr. Fiera for, you know, for this invitation and this opportunity to present our practice. This is really our first invitation to, uh, to present our profile and, uh, and short period. Of, uh, and I would also like to thank uh, the university, but today, for hosting us tonight. I'll start, uh, like, this presentation is about three parts. Mainly the first part is an introduction about the context of Cairo and, uh, and the context of the past ten, uh, two decades, like the last ten years. And uh, this is where the, con uh, where the office emerged, or our practice emerged in this, uh, like, five years ago. And the second part will be mainly about um, to give you an overview of uh, the services that we give, uh, because we're, we work in urban architecture, uh, interior, and product design. And the last part is going to go to one of our projects uh, to give you an overview also about our design process. Um, the main focus of our it was only like two, a few weeks, days ago that I managed to, uh, to put down my thoughts on this lecture and to prepare. And uh, this opportunity of coming here has allowed me to look back at what we did for the past five years and uh, to focus on the, the birth of this practice, its evolution, growth, and uh, path. And uh, what's the relationship of what we've been doing for the past five years in the context in which uh, it emerged in, and especially the market. On how the demand in the market dictates what the viewer, end user, consumer can see, how a given and current condition of the market can uh, determine the existence of ideas, concepts, uh, either enter the public realm or be um, the contents of a cupboard uh, or on shelves and works that fall outside this like, uh, market or circuit of consumption are alienated, invisible, and lack, and they lack visibility. They are powerless and they have no impact in the government of the market. Uh, their failure to these works, their, their failure to get commodified, conform, or to get attached in a stylistic categorization um, make them or keep them out of the circuit and keep them from entering the public view. <coughs> the repeated question or test throughout our path or short path was how these work enter, how these work stir trouble the dominant work, and how we can put them into view. Our starting point for this approach, we're going to have an overview about Cairo, what has happened in the past 10 years, uh, and what are the market dominance and what is governing the market there. Cairo, as you know all, it's uh, known as the uh, old, in old times, like um, 100 minarets, 1,000 domes, rich heritage from Quranic, Islamic, Coptic. It has a complexity, diversity. It's a magnet mega city that has in a population over 18 million inhabitants. Uh, it's it's uh, growing very fast, moving in a lot of uh, growth, expansion, multi-urban streams happening um, from government investments, institutions, educational facilities, to infrastructure projects that are happening today. But mainly, and, and two um, growing east and west of Cairo. Cairo is growing into the, into the desert by two satellite hubs, one on the east and one on the west. Uh, mainly gated compounds, social housing, and uh, informal settlements. The informal settlements 
basically like a periphery for the Cairo, the, the city. It's all over the city. There, you can see it every day when you go back and forth from Cairo to the east or Cairo to the west. There is, um, for Cairoans, these areas are familiar places that they see and every day on back and forth from socioeconomic um, hubs. But they're also unanonymous uh, places for them. Cairo has, has, like many in the region, in the Middle East, have surpassed economic crisis. The economy from the 90s to the, like 2004 wasn't going well, started to go well, and then the crisis happened again in 2008. These transformations had their representation on the urban and uh, cultural and social life. But mainly I'm going to speak about the urban and architecture representation. In the early 90s, there was like a great nostalgia for the Belle Epoque. There was a lot of uh, projects done in the stylistic, um, classical, baroque, whatever. It's all, also um, a lot of imitation. Other trends were like um, based on the nostalgia of the national agenda, Quranic, maybe Islamic, maybe. And um, others were influenced by what was happening in Dubai. There's a lot of uh, westernized buildings that were happening and having this um, like uh, international size. Um, moving from that, or in this context, where uh, of course there were very good, uh, you know, um, architects like Hassan Fathi, others architects who had their um, own uh, approach to architecture, but they were all individual uh, efforts here and there. But the, what I'm presenting here is the overall, if you go into Cairo and you see it now, and you jump into a plane and you go there, this is what you want to see. Westernized, maybe you see one building that you can go to, but they're all individual efforts um, that you cannot put as a sum of a moving or, or growing mo momentum. And in this context, architects often felt straight-jacketed into identities they didn't always care for, much less ask for. And this reminds me of my first commission back in 2003, where I had to design a small house for a private client. And uh, in this uh, 2002, also, the nostalgia of the Belle Epoque was there, and everybody was building their own private houses into classical um, Renaissance architecture. And I presented this project for the client, but unfortunately, um, it stayed as a, it never got built. And it stayed as on the shelf for, five, for maybe two, three years later. Until the Biblioteca Alexandrina brought, uh, was doing a Young Architects Award, and we won this award for, for this house. Brave as it might have been at birth, not conceding or, or conforming to market control, it couldn't stand on its own. It couldn't emerge into the world and be there. Its existence as contents of a cupboard or a shelf was crucial, given the current condition of the market. For these reasons, I had, by 2005, I had an opportunity to design or to collaborate with renowned architect Abdel Halim Ibrahim and another Legoretta Legoretta, is a Mexican architect, as an interior designer for the American University in Cairo, which at the time was the Cairo largest project in years. I got this opportunity, although I favored architecture more, but I felt that I need that our project or whatever we're doing to be interviewed and to slip into view to the viewer and using. And from these two projects, we got credibility more, and then we got into another path, which is the product design. 
by 2006 and 2007, we felt that product design could be a parallel path to go into more different markets, a window to an international border, and to go to Milan. And we went to Salon Satellite. We never knew that we would be the first Egyptian to do that, and as reported by Financial Times, and we presented our work then. And this opened our eyes to a whole new world of publicity, marketing, and the power of that, and even any field. And how this can be an added value to our work. Uh, from that on, from 2007-2008, by these projects, we, we, we started um, gaining more television, see, more uh, we started by doing like private houses for private clients, and bit by bit it got more into public and, and more uh, commercial projects. And our first commission was in 2007. The block earlier in the slide. By 2007, we got this commission to design an apartment building in a new city center, the mixed use center, which is the first mixed use center in Egypt. And this mix use, we were the only Egyptian architect to have like a tiny block in that city. We started having more architecture opportunities, more prestigious projects, have projects that are more into the public realm and not to private clients and private persons. From this evolution, a series of decisions, procedures, strategy, which have directed a change, the short career path of our practice, going from architecture to interior and back to architecture, believe that they all fall under the design realm. We were able to slip into view our ideas, concepts, and capabilities, gaining more and more vis visibility, which was the main aim, and to engage into the public context. decision uh, I took in the early career and then we took uh, as when I had the office is uh, should I engage, should we engage or the versus is isolation, negation or peripheral nation. And we felt that through this career we're trying to carve our path through the market. We're trying to overcome what comes and take the opportunity that can uh, let us put our work into view and also uh, be uh, visible. And getting without commodifying, conforming to the market was the main aim or balance, that we have to balance between engaging and being uh, commodifying our work uh, to the to consumers or whatever stylistic expression or dominance was there. And how to negotiate the position within the masses under the overbearing pressure of consumers and social norms um, and other things. The main focus of our office in regard, as Omer has put it, most of the offices in Cairo are production offices mainly concerned for technical and design development and construction documents. There is, of course, uh, design officers, but mainly few. You can count them on your hands, maybe 10, 20 maximum, uh, the number of uh, design officers there. Uh, but the situation today in Cairo is, as I see it, from my point of view, is in a promising stage uh, transition. Although still young art scene, still young architecture arena, but it's going, growing into a vibrant culture. With the internet, with the web, it provided a platform for architects here and there to um, present their work, to put their work. And you see it in a culture, literature, cinema, you see a lot of young architects, a uh, lot of young uh, people doing good work and, and, and you can really know about them. 
before, like 10 years or 30 years ago, you couldn't see these people or you can, can't feel them. So I, I, I have a, uh, an understanding that Egypt is going like in a, I don't want to call it renaissance, but growing into a very vibrant culture scene. A better cl uh, climate for new client, uh, for new, new talents to emerge. I believe this momentum is growing and and will be very visible uh, soon. Uh, the next stage, um, I've, after I presented the above, an overview of the, one of our projects uh, to give you a brief of the overview. Uh, sorry about our design process and how we. Uh, present and work on this project. Uh, this is uh, an apartment building. The purpose of it is to house uh, apartments, duplexes, uh, penthouses, uh, different uh, sizes uh, in a mixed use city, about uh, 2 million square feet. City. It will host the city hotels, uh, corporate, finance center, pedestrian walks, retail. It has a school on the si uh, periphery to the city. And this, uh, we had the tiny block. But before going into the design of or the context and place of this of this block, I would like to uh, put down our thoughts and interpretation about the home and the dwelling. And, and how the notion of privacy is still an issue uh, to us in our culture today. Um, it differs in its degree from different class hierarchy, but it's still there, and the notion is still uh, important. The, the questioning the, the form and the introverted and extroverted uh, nature of homes is a question uh, for us, because still people have this uh, issue. And the other notion that I want to look at is the boundary and security. These two things, uh, for us, when we try to like brainstorm on if we're going to design an apartment building that is going to have homes inside and houses, what are the two major things? and how even the overall of the, this apartment building is perceived and how from the early in the past, when you look at it, it has to have this like boundary security effect. And security is another thing. Boundaries, you see them in vernacular archi architecture in Egypt, in like subsidies, settlements around the city and also e even in, in A-class or high-end clients. Um, and how a house is, is uh, developed through a process of um, divisions and uh, subdivisions and incremental without any addition. So the boundary is the main thing and then it comes and involves in subdivisions uh, And we have uh, like uh, looked at or kind of patterns that we see them there for social for social needs, and we believe that they are still happening. One of them is boundaries. Uh, the other is gateways and the transition between the extra, the exterior and the interior, and how these transitions are important and the in-between spaces, which are something, right now when we go and experience, um, courtyard is not in itself an essence for them, but having a space where it's introvert and extrovert at the same time, it is something that um, uh, people need. The other thing is uh, screenings and layers of screening or layers of transition from the outside to the inside it doesn't have to be the much of a screening. It's, all, it's only about how you perceive a home or you transition from different kind of layers. The projections as a sort of identifying your apartment, your identity within the whole apartment building, shadings and circulation elements. And we have put them in like a diagrammatic and 
the main four are boundaries, gateways, in between spaces. And I'll move from that to uh, the context. Where sound is the blue uh, dot there. It's outside of Cairo. Uh, it's uh, uh, from Cairo to West Sound. You go through the uh, ring road. And through this ring road, what you see is the, the periphery of Cairo, which is the subsidies, the settlements on the agricultural land. It's into the desert, it has nothing there. But we felt these areas, which are very parallel to Cairo, but you see them wherever you go from the city to the, to the outside desert hub. And these areas are for us a source of inspiration. And also, um, they are uh, familiar to all Cairoans. It's only that for them it's anonymous. This is the tiny block that I was speaking about. And uh, the upper... This is the business center of the city. Here is the residential part of the city. And this is the pedestrian part, so a commercial hub here. And most of these are offices and commercial areas. And the lower part is the residential area. This was one, one of the main entrances into the city and connected to the other entrance where the, the uh, Cairo Alexandria Road is here. So this for us uh, is a buffer zone from the housing to the business part which is going to be a traffic road. These are the areas where we'd like to have connection because maybe they are all residential areas. Um, we have like a minimum maintain of 20% ground floor, we located them on this side, and here is the primary uh, analysis of, we had that as a preferred room coming from the northwestern side, and also the street is helping it to be more uh, faster, and the lower part is the west, east, west, and south, and east of the north, and east. We started by this sketch, which is defining the boundary of the space um, and also because this is a tiny space we felt that everything here ha has to have like a small landmark project it's a, it needs to be coherent massive and, and be there in the middle of these four roads and we starting the, the, the air into the building and seeing how the other climate issues. These are the first drafts for the how we see this apartment building, and then the different courtyards to grab the air into the space. And, and this is this is the gateway. We find a normal gateway to enter to the space, and then we have different courtyards which are going to be like spaces introverted and extroverted and meanwhile for the apartments uh, the These were early sketches, but at the end were a bit changed from this, um, uh, from this diagram. <coughs> These are the first drafts of the plan trying to uh, create apartments that have courtyards and that have in and out spaces. Not total courtyard, it's uh, something between balcony and court that have uh, an extroverted uh, quality and also an introverted one. And, and these are the passes of the air and the wind inside. Um, as I said in the beginning, these were for us our um, inspirations and we feel that uh, 
the interaction between the green and the building, between how they grow and, and the system they grow within. We took it as a base for our design from the ground floor to the plants, to the innovations. And, sorry, and how we see the innovation as like uh, different layers. The initial layer is a solid wall, like the boundary thing, and then we carve in the void, and then there is another layer which is like transparent, semi-transparent spaces that come out from this blank uh, walls. And like you have here like three different layers of transparency, of facade, uh, and also for the relationship between the outside and the inside. These were different iterations of how we see the building. And, and at the end, uh, we did these projections, which, which for us defined the spaces, and also they are coming out from the same black box wall that we have. And everything here is subtracted or folded from the same uh, plane or the same boundary that we started off with, um, divisions, holdings, subtractions, and different layering were the governing uh, principle for the building. And then we're right now on the concept stage of this uh, project. So we were trying to do different iterations of the facades and how we need different solid to semi-solid to maybe more transparent uh, things and how the identities of the balconies will have different shapes and also maybe inside different color scheming and they will all be in a brick wall which is something uh, that you find locally very easy and also um, uh, not costly. Uh, This is the layout, and these are the different kinds of apartments, and it shows how they interlock in different ways, creating different kinds of courtyard and spatial experience from the outside to the inside. And, and also they, they provide for an, uh, one of the apartments, each apartment has to have like a view on the inside, on the outside from here, and the inside from the other. So we try to maintain that for all the apartments to have like this two views. And this is the gateway for the apartment building. Um, and also it defines, uh, gives the people uh, who's going to use it more security and feel that this is their like big family house. These were conceptual um, um, perspective that we did like two years ago, but now because we're into like a concept schematic phase, we're doing different iterations on the material and how we can have a better transition from the solid walls into a material of screening and into another. So these are recent, these are recent, uh, uh, recent uh, sketches that we did like two months. Uh. Okay, okay, okay, I'm sorry. And this is also a study of the innovation, how the solid and void um, of the different, uh, these are like the, uh, one innovation for the four uh, sides. Uh, and how, sorry, and how the void will have different kinds of um, like dimension, whatever. This is like the south elevation, this is the east, this is the north and how these uh, voids will have 
different degree and hierarchy of and, and responding to the function of whether we need more solid or more void. Thank you. Thank you. It was an excellent presentation, very charming, very interesting. From our perspective, building one single block unit without considering the rest, it's a very interesting idea because we have so much use here to build blocks which are all the same. How are you going to take into consideration the neighbors? ago, a presentation like four architects or five at the same day. So whatever we're doing, if it's even beautiful, maybe it won't work together and maybe this will be a catastrophe, you know. And, and I had this dilemma. I, I said, how am I I'm going to work? Should I tell the developer he's not doing the right job by, by assigning four people at the same time doing something and not putting guidelines? Because there was no guideline in the brief. Maybe the AUC was an excellent example of the, the American University in Cairo was an excellent example of how like maybe 10 architects were involved and each had uh, its, its identity there but, but coherent and homogeneous and, and working together. And this because maybe the urban plan was done before and a lot of the criteria and or, or guidelines were there and there was a prime architect governing that whatever is happening, he's overseeing that. So for me, it was a tough project. I did what I could in it, but uh, I tried to advise the, the developer uh, on whatever, but it takes time. You know, I presented this in 2000, early 2008, and right now the project is uh, on hold for the financial crisis because August, September hit and then uh, everything stopped. And now he's, he's reconsidering everything. So we're on hold and maybe we're going to redesign the concept. And maybe this period would help a lot of things happen and settle down. And, and we, but I totally agree with you. And this was partly for me, like I'm working in a void alone and uh, trying to do something uh, related to our heritage but in a different thing. And I, I'm, but I'm very happy that this put on hold and maybe we do another project like next year. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your question. You have a very good uh, example of an architect, Hassan Fati, which is a wonderful architect and who is interested in the sustainable design in a way. Uh, what are the precautions you have taken in your design about sustainability? Because I think Egypt is a very hot country, crowded country, 
the crisis of economy, and you have said nothing about the design uh, as an architect, your responsibility of sustainability. Could you explain some? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. I didn't talk about sustainability because I see it as a, uh, something that it's uh, now that it's uh, like a given thing. We have to deal with it and it's something that I don't have to mention because it's in there and I have to work with it. And, um, and I'm trying from the early in the stage of the design is to try to ventilate this as natural as possible to each apartment has two uh, like two sides of ventilation. I'm trying to bring air into this as much as I can. And uh, maybe in the last perspective you see more glass, but this was like a pre-concept uh, two years ago. So this is why we're working now on how to treat the facades with local materials uh, and to put the other layer of schematic. Uh, of course, Hassan Fathi is for us is a mentor, and we learn from him a lot. Uh, I agree with a lot of the things that he achieved, but, but maybe we're trying to get his inspiration um, in a more conceptual way in our work. Um, and I hope I <laughs> answered you. <this. laughs> Ben özellikle mahremiyet kavramı ile ilgili ele almak istiyorum. Yaptığınız tasarımda mahremiyet kavramını hem saklıyorsunuzdan da gösteriyorsunuz. Yani bunu açtığınızı görüyorum. Bu bakış açısının aslında biraz batıya da gönderme var mı? Yani kendi gelinliksel bir insan için batıdaki düşüncelerin etkilenmeniz var. Yan yapıların e, aslında kendi içinde bulunduğu yapıda e, çok da mahremiyeti değil de daha şeffaflığı gösterdiğini görüyorum. Sizin düşüncelerinizi alabilirsiniz. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür ederim. Teşekkür
and then we evolve a lot on, on 3D, but it wasn't in a good presentation that I can bring it here. But there is a lot of layers that I've added and um, built into the building. So the end product will not have that much latitude. As far as I understood, <coughs> uh, this project has taken a lot of time uh, to come to the schematic design phase. Uh, this is uh, a very long uh, period for our standards because uh, today in Turkey uh, we would like to design as quick as possible. Is it correct or not? Uh, it's debatable. But uh, in the real estate business, uh, when you design something to sell, uh, there is a danger with the design uh, period when it is so long, the demands may change. Uh, when the demand is high, uh, you have to uh, act uh, rather quick in this case. Uh, did you have also the uh, same concern when uh, coming to the uh, schematic design phase? Maybe I didn't explain myself uh, very good uh, the last time. This project as a concept, for the, it was only the, the, the concept phase was two months, uh, eight weeks to submit this project. And this is what we submit. And then it stopped because we submitted this in uh, April 2008. And after they just, uh, the developer is, you know, taking the other submitters by September, you know, uh, by April, we got another commission for the success of this one. So they give us another commission on the west, east town of Kaya. And then by September, when the financial hit, they stopped. And they said, okay, we have to stop maybe for one year, two years. For, so they stopped until now. And um, like um, a month ago, they said, okay, we're going to go to relaunch and everything. And then they said, no, we better slow down. 2010, and we see because they're now studying the market, the demand. This was designed for to be um, like one bedroom, two bedroom, and three bedroom and four bedroom. And then they came two months ago and said, okay, we designed it only one bedroom and two bedroom. And then now they say, no, four bedroom, cancel the one bedroom. So they, so the design process of the concept phase was two months. But it stopped since. So we did like, the past two months, we did like a revamp for a schematic phase, and then we're on hold because they need to study the market well to understand what people need. And, um, but I agree with you, and other projects go very fast, and they, they take more risks. And it depends on the, on the developer. If he understands the, the market well, then we go for it. <laughs> Thank you. much for the presentation. Uh, I'd like to change the uh, topic a bit and focus on your own practice. I'm really curious about your architectural practice. Could you, could, uh, can you please give us some hints, some clues about the atmosphere of the office? Yes. How many are you? And uh, based on your previous examples of industrial design and different scales, I mean, I'm really wondering whether it is a transdisciplinary, interdisciplinary atmosphere. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay. Uh, our office, uh, right now we are 26 architects, uh, about 36 uh, in all. We started 2005, like early 2005. We were back then two, three people, two and me. Uh, and, uh, 
and then it kept growing, but from 2008, uh, it, this is what's the transition, from like six people to 12 people, and then uh, right now to 26. Um, as I said in the presentation that our first milestone project was the American University in Cairo as an interior uh, designer for some of the spaces, not everything, of course. And what um, back then we had like 80% of our work was interior, and this is where we went into product design, and only 20% were architecture. Uh, people at the time were not really uh, still in a in this classical phase, they don't know, they don't accept these kind of projects, they don't know our capability in that, they're a bit, you know, uh, hesitant, indifferent of what we do. And then from these milestone projects and uh, going to Milan and, and London with product designs, we, we, we achieve, achieved some credibility. And some private clients started. Um, giving us jobs for their private residence. So we do a job and then it gets another. And this was until 2000, end of 2007. And starting from 2007, we began having more corporates. So right now we have like 85 to 90 architecture and urban and 15 uh, interior. And maybe the product design right now is a bit, uh, not a lot of things we're doing. We have like five percent, but we, we would like to have more. But I needed to focus on, you know, I needed to focus a bit. And I cannot do everything, and people with me, so we, we needed. And product design is, in, is something in Egypt. It's new. When I went to Milan, everybody said, and they, some of the people that I met there said, you don't have industrial design in your your faculties. How come you're here? And uh, for me, I mean, it was, uh, I, th uh, I think when you're an architect, you, you have a lot of awareness of design and this is under it. But I think product design, when I went there, it's really big thing and I, it needs a lot of knowledge, a lot of technical issues that I don't know. And this is why I said, let's focus on the, on the thing I know, I know better. So, um, uh, so right now we're 85% is architecture in urban and 20. So it's uh, like the contrast of how we started off. Uh, but we're still interested in some interior, some product design as, as we go along. And, and product design uh, for a young, uh, what, what it opens for us is, is the publicity and marketing. Because as Omer said, when you try to find an Egyptian architect working, it was hard for him to find. It uh, was hard to find platforms where architects there, where is their work, uh, how to find them. So product design for us was like a, a, um, a t I don't know how to say that, but uh, it opened our eyes into what's happening globally. It was uh, how marketing is affecting art yeah, and the publicity affects architects. You know, not every star architect is a good architect, but the marketing and publicity is the main thing. That in Egypt you don't you don't feel feel it at all at the because even architecture magazines just started like a year ago. There are a lot of initiative of, of an architecture magazine that opens and three months it closed. And right now we have one magazine that's for two years been there, and another for eight years. And this happened only from 2008. So, um, uh, <laughs> Öncelikle herkese merhabalar demek istiyorum. Hoş geldiniz ediyorum. Uh, İngilizce soracağım soruyu. Kusura bakmayın çünkü e, Türkçe sorduk mu biraz anlaşılma bozuklu olduğuna dolayı. Onu istedim. E, hi. Welcome to Turkey. Basically I have seen your slides uh, and your last image is perfect. 
Uh, what kind of a program did you use to render that one? Is it like Big and Max or something? Yeah, very Max, very Max. But one thing, uh, and, and I saw other things too. I think it was slight one. If you could open that one, please. Yeah, if you want it, slight. Wasn't it very good image? Image. Yeah, 51, I think. Yeah. You see this, yeah? This pattern, I think it's Egyptian. Yes. Yeah. When I That's saw it, I was so happy. I said, yeah, see, really nice thing. And towards the end, you had a, a wall with this pattern on it, I think. It's, it was the very end. You know, you kept it for a minute or two. If you could just go to that slide. Yeah, no, go on. Yeah, that one. You see that image at the top on the right hand side? Uh, and the pattern. Yeah, that, that one. Basically, when I saw that image too, I said, yeah, this is fantastic architecture. And it was good. I said that one because it's like referring to Egypt, you know, which is one of the best places to be. I haven't been there, but I just tell my father to give me like a little bit more, borrow, him, borrow some money and try to go there. So this was really nice. And the uh, uh, image with the one was really nice. And your veranda, last one was really nice to your house. But what I couldn't see is this reflecting on that house. It was a brand new house, really nice, you know. It's like, if it was in Europe, it would be really nice. You would say, oh, Paris, really nice, Amsterdam, really good. But the, uh, the, the, the, the problem is, with Turkish architects too, and with some other Middle East architects, when we design houses, we are just kind of copying Europe a little bit. We just don't look around. We have been to Istanbul. You, you, you can just see how much inspiration there is. But I criticize Turkish architects or professors who are teaching Turkish people. Uh, and the reason is because we are just reflecting always to Europe. We just say Europe, yeah, we have, we have this modern architecture. But can you, like, as an architect, I just ask you, in your further designs, reflect more on your culture, uh, culture to your houses. Like you said, a, a famous architect cannot be good architect. You, re, you realize this. Are you doing that kind of houses because you realize this? You try to be nice to European people so you can sell your houses in Europe or you try to be like a real cultural architect. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. This is the latest renderings of the apartment building that you see at the end. The other renderings were also concept level, and this was a bit on the schematic level. And the last rendering with the glass and thing, this was like 2008. And also when we moved on to a schematic and then we put a, on hold by the developer, these were the level of uh, our understanding of the building. So it's not a total imitation of the Western or whatever is happening, but of course we, we live in a global world and we have to understand what is happening there and we have to learn from it and then do our own interpretation of it. And I, I, I, don't, uh, I don't claim that I, may, uh, I succeeded or not. It's just uh, an investigation and experimentation for us and it's a path of looking to culture and trying to do something of our own. I'm not sure, maybe in a project we succeed more than another one. But it's, um, and maybe even when we do something like that, it, got, it, it, it, it would not be, uh, you know, accepted by the users in Egypt. Maybe they don't want this. You know, this is something as if they're looking at their own things and this is something too familiar for them. But we're trying to do something a balance. Maybe sometimes we lose the balance or maybe sometimes we achieve it. 